Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. New Year's Eve, a time for some celebration. And as per usual, I've got some bubbles to help you ring in the new year. These wines are free samples and I have free reign to review them however I want. Kind of like last week's Christmas special. I've got an Argentine bubbles and then two from Italy. The best part is all three are rosés. I love bubbles, but rosé bubbles really do it for me. First up is the rosé version of the Domaine Bousquet Sparkling Brut Traditional Organic. I won't go through the background of the winery here again, just know that they make excellent wines and they at least use organic grapes with many of their wines, being fully organic, as in they carry the USDA Organic Seal, the most stringent organic standard in the world. Also, I've had dozens of their wines over the years and I can't think of any I would not recommend. Let's get the stats for this wine. The non-vintage Domaine Bousquet Sparkling Brut Traditional Organic Rosé. Suggested retail price is $18. It's from Mendoza. It is 75% Pinot Noir, 25% Chardonnay, hand harvested, made with organic grapes, vegan friendly, certified sustainable, Lee's aging is six months, ABV is 12%, the RS is Brut or eight grams per liter, the pH is 3.05, and the TA is 8.75. Okay, moving on to the next two. Both come from the Trento Doc region of Italy. Now, you may be like, Trento Doc? Yes, it's the Trento DOC, but it's traditionally written as one word, Trento Doc. This is a traditional method known as Metodo Classico, only DOC in the Trentino Alto Adige region of Italy. There are a total of five appellations in Italy that are traditional method only. They are French Accorda, DOCG. Uh, it first came into being in 1967, but became a DOCG um, and traditional method only in 1995. The Ultrepo Pavese Metodo Classico, uh, DOCG. It became a DOC in 1970 and became a DOCG in 2007. Altalanga DOCG became a DOCG, I'm sorry, became a DOC in 2002 and then a DOCG in 2011. Trento DOC uh, was uh, founded in 1993, and the Vigneti della Serencima uh, DOC uh, that became a DOC in 2011. The very first place a traditional method wine was made was in Piemonte in the mid-1800s, but it wasn't until 1902 when Giulio Ferrari began producing Metoda classical wines in Trentino. At the time, this area was still part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It was the last area, along with what is known as the Julian March, to become part of what we now know as Italy after World War I. Only a small part of the Julian March remained a part of Italy after World War II. Other areas also began making Metodo Classico wines throughout the 20th century, but only these five are exclusive to the method. Let's talk Spumante. So Spumante just means sparkling wine. Now this is a full-on sparkling versus something like Frizzante, which is a lightly sparkling wine. Now, Spumante can be either made in the Metoda Classico or also in what is called the Charmat method. That is also known as Metodo Martinotti uh, in Italy. Federico Martinotti invented and patented this method in 1895. Now, it was improved upon uh, and again patented by Eugene Charmat in 1907. The Charmat method utilizes a large tank to get the second fermentation rather than in the bottle like the traditional method. It's cheaper and doesn't produce the same quality of autolysis. That was, that's what gives you the brioche character. Uh, and the bubbles aren't as tight or as fine. Uh, they, they can get close, but in, in general, they don't get as tight. Uh, it's really hard to beat the traditional method. 
So while you may see Spumante on lots of bottles of Italian sparkling wine, unless it also says Matoto Classico, it used the Charmat method. And there are a lot of appellations in Italy that can produce various forms of sparkling wine as one of the approved styles. But again, only five are exclusive to Matoto Classico. One of the most well-known wines that uses the Charmat method is Prosecco, all right? Now, arguably, French Accorda and Trento Doc are the best known of the five. And I'll be honest, French Accorda was the first one I heard about. It wasn't until I had studied wine for a while that I even knew there were other sparkling-only appellations. A few years ago, I got some other Trento Doc wines to review, and I can say they were really nice. The appellation has an official website that gives some great detail of the area. I suggest you check it out. There are a total of 66 producers listed on the website who make Trento Doc wines, including these two. Now let's get the details of the Trento DOC. All right, so the styles that they can make are Bianco or White, Rosado or Rosé, or Reserva that has to be Bianco. The authorized varieties are Chardonnay, Pinot Bianco or Pinot Blanc, Pinot Nero or Pinot Noir, Meunier. The minimum ABV for Bianco or Rosado is 11.5%. For Reserva, it's 12%. The minimum total acidity, or TA, is 5 grams per liter. Now, here are the aging requirements. For non-vintage, it needs to be at least 15 months on the lees. For vintage, it's 24 months on the lees. And for Reserva, it's 36 months on the lees. The additional requirements. Rosado wines may use rosé, uh, the term rosé. And non-vintage wines must show the disgorgement date. All right, let's get to know these two wines better. First, we have Montfort. The winery was established in 1945 by the Simoni family and is located in the town of Lavis. They began producing their Matoda Classical wines in 1985. And that's really all I got. Okay, there's a touch more on the website, which is linked below. Let's get the stats for the wine. It's the non-vintage Cantine Montfort Trento Doc Rosé. Suggested retail price is $24. It comes from the Trento DOC. The vineyard communes are Trento and per green Val Sugama. The soil is a clay porphyry sand. Porphyry means granite. 50% Pinot Nero and 50% Chardonnay. The lees aging is 24 months. The Spocatora or disgorgement is 2022. The ABV is 12.5%. The RS is brut or eight grams per liter. And the TA is 7.49 grams per liter. A couple things to make note of, the Lee's aging and RS are from the text sheet supplied by the person who sent me the sample. The winery's website shows the Lee's aging to be 30 months and the RS to be 3.8 grams per liter. Also, the regulations say that for a non-vintage, you must have a disgorgement date, but the back label only shows a year. So I'm guessing that's all that's required. And typically, you get a month and year because it kind of matters to know how many months it's been since the disgorgement. Once the wine has been disgorged, there is no longer any lees contact. The lees, besides providing that nice bakery, brioche, pastry kind of aromas and flavors, is also preventing oxidation. Once they are gone, oxidation can now occur, and that will eventually contribute nutty characteristics. So what I mean by you usually get the month and year is every other wine that I've seen that has a disgorgement date typically has month and year, not just the year. Okay, on to our third wine from Indrizzi. They have been around since 1885 and is one of the oldest wineries in Trentino. They are located in the San Michel Al Adige commune of Trentino, along with along the Alto Adige Sudotrol border. So a bit more about this region. Trentino is kind of the Italian side of the region, whereas Alto Adige is the Austrian side. Sudotrol is the Austrian name and it means South Tyrol. So yes, there is a North Tyrol. It is the main part of the Austrian state of Tyrol. So like Alsace and France, you have a combination of cultures here in the entire region of Trentino Alto Adige. They talk about being one of the first eco-friendly wineries in the region. Some of the things that they have done to achieve this are, the winery is underground. This helps to keep a constant temperature without relying on HVAC. They get most of the energy for the winery via solar panels. It's a mostly gravity fed winery. The use of nitrogen reduces the need for sulfites during the winemaking process. They also use what's called sexual confusion in the vineyards, and that reduces the need for insecticides and herbicides. Burrs are used to control insects. 
With that said, there are no certifications. Now that's fine. As I've mentioned many times over the years, lots of wineries, especially in Europe, don't seek out certifications for something they've been doing for generations. It's expensive to do. Is it nice to see them on a label? Yeah. However, as long as I feel I can trust the winery to be truthful, then it's not critical. Now I encourage you to visit the website for more information. One additional thing is that they also have a winery in Tuscany. Now let's get the stat for this wine. The 2018 Cantina Andrizzi Piancastello Trento Doc Rosé Reserva. Suggested retail price is $28. I'm going to get back to this Reserva thing in a second. It's from the Trento DOC. The vineyard is in the Castello di Monreal Konigsberg Commune. It's a blend of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. We don't have any um, uh, proportions. The lees aging is 48 months. Uh, the ABV is 12.5%. The RS is Brut not at nine grams per liter. The total acidity is 5.5 grams per liter and the extract is 19 grams per liter. All right, first of all, I didn't catch it when I wrote the script at the beginning where I talked about the requirements for Trento Doc and I said Reserva is Bianca. Well, guess what? We have a Rosado Reserva. So the source I got of the stats or the regulations for Trento Doc, I'm gonna have to go back and double check what, what, what I got from there and then um, double check a couple other sources and then probably let them know that their stuff's wrong because obviously this wine proves you can make a Reserva Rosado. Anyway, a couple other things. Uh, the text sheet does say, that the, it does say that the analysis part, the ABV, the RS, et cetera, may vary each vintage. These are probably their target numbers. Now the ABV for this wine is 12.5. Extract is for dry extract and it's not a usual stat. I honestly don't really understand the significance of this number other than what it would be to a winemaker. I, I got a couple links talking about it, so check them out. All right, and with that, let's get into the wines. All righty. So, I'm actually doing these in reverse, doing the New Year's Eve special first, and then gonna do the Christmas one, mainly because I have a red wine as one of the one of the Christmas wines, and I want to use the exact same three glasses. I mean, I could have done a fourth glass, I guess, if I wanted to. I don't know. But I'm super excited to do these. Um, I mentioned in the Christmas special that I got to have lunch with Anne Bousquet, and uh, we talked a lot about some really cool stuff. Check out the Christmas episode to... As I kind of go over a little bit of that stuff. This is a little bit difficult to open, which happens occasionally, but we're all good. All righty. There wasn't much of a pop on that. I'm a little concerned. There may not be a lot of bubbles. There's bubbles. Okay. We're good. Whoop. It's a very light rosé. It's almost an amber-ish color. That's why I checked, I checked again to make sure I was opening the right one. It says rosé on it. All right, and then for the Trento Doc. So yeah, I actually did a Ferrari Trento Doc and I think I did something else. Uh, I'd have to look it all up. Um, but I'm excited to try these. When they, when, they, when they asked if I wanted to do these, I was like, yes. Now granted, it's been a while. I've had these, oh, there we go. There's a bunch of pressure right there. So I'm a little concerned, there we go. Yeah, I'm a little concerned that there wasn't a lot of pushback on that. And, and these wines aren't like ice cold. They've been, they, I pulled them out of the fridge about 30-ish minutes ago. So they should be warmed up a little bit. Yeah, see this, this is, this color in the rosé is good. I'm, I'm getting concerned about that. Um, you know, hey, stuff happens. I've actually had, I've rarely ever had a sparkling wine actually be flat. Uh, in my Morton's days, I was serving some Vouve and I opened it and it was like, kind of like this. It was kind of like, oh, there wasn't much push. There wasn't much pressure, but I was like, all right. And I poured it, but there were bubbles. Okay. So I poured it for the guy and the guy goes flat. And I'm like, ha ha ha. And he goes, no, it's flat. And I'm like, oh, all right, I'll get you another bottle. So it does happen. Like this one doesn't have as much, doesn't, isn't pushing the cork as much. Oh, there we go. We got the little pop. Ooh, I could smell the little like, you know, brioche type of thing. 
well, you know, it is 48 months on the lease, so it's probably going to have a lot more arom aromatics on it. All righty. Uh, I also have my handy dandy, uh, really, really good sparkling wine um, preservers. These are the best version. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to the ones, I, these exact ones that I have. They are, they are kind of pricey. I think they're around 12 ish dollars last time I checked, but they really preserve things like these will be great for like at least two weeks. All right. So on the color, like you can kind of tell like, so, all right. So you can see on the color here, this is almost more like a white wine. This one has like that classic kind of salmonish color, but this one also is kind of like similar to that color. So I'm sure that has to do with the combination of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay uh, and how they, how they did it. But let's check it out. Um, there's definitely less bubbles in the Bousquet. Uh, I can still see the bubbles going really great on these two. This one is not so much. So this, this might be flat. I mean, on the aroma, it smells nice. Um, I should get a lot of apple, a lot of red apple to it. I do get a little bit of that bakery. So even though it's only on the lease for like 15 months, actually, no, this is on the lease for like six months. Um, and this will be like 15 months. You still will get that autolysis from Lee's aging. Um, this should have a lot more of it, but I get a little bit of croissant type of thing. Apple, a touch of pear. I get a touch, a very touch, a little bit of strawberry. Um, rosés usually get me more red fruited stuff than really like the palmaceous stuff. Let's taste it. It tastes good, but it is flat. So I'm just going to go and stop. I'm sure it's a wonderful, if, if I had a, a wine that had the full on sparkling, um, I, it would be great. I'm not going to try to power through it. Uh, I, I should have learned my lesson with one of the other wines I did a, a couple months ago where I was like, ah, uh, no, if it's, if it's something wrong with the wine, just move on to the next one. All right. So move on to the Montfort. So you see, here's the thing. You can, you can smell the carbonation. Like you can smell that there's, there's there's CO2 coming off of the wine. Whereas this one, you really just, you can't really, it just smells like a still wine. It tastes good. And when you swirl it in your mouth, you do get a little bit of carbonation. And I mean, it, it just, it happens. It shouldn't, but sometimes, you know, just it, probably the cork just wasn't quite perfect. All right. So on this one, so I get a little more red fruit, but it's really, really light. I don't get a ton coming out of the glass other than I got the, I got that CO2. I did get a bit of croissant type of thing, bakery, brioche, super light though. So it's not, it's not really coming out of the glass. And I, I try not to swirl sparkling wine too much. Um, but yeah, the swirling helps it out a little bit. It's more like a strawberry croissant, but it's super light. So let's just get on the palate. Great mouthfeel. So you feel the mousse, which is what the, what the bubbles are. And so we're getting that kind of replication of champagne. It's really hard to replicate true champagne um, because there's other things besides just it was second fermentation in the bottle. Um, there's other things involved. It's just like trying to replicate actual Burgundy wine um, when, it's not from, when it's not from Burgundy, right? There's a terroir thing going on here. Um, with that said, um, it's very close to what I, if, if, if you told me this was Rosé Champagne, I'd be like, okay, I would just believe you. Um, it would be a little bit different, but it's using the exact same grapes. That's one thing about the Trento Doc is they are only using grapes that are the same grapes they use in, in Champagne. They don't use anything else which that's fine. You can make some great sparkling wines using grapes that are not Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Meunier. Besides, there's like four others that you can use in Champagne. It tastes good though. So that kind of strawberry croissant thing is a lot more prominent. Um, it's really, really leans, leans heavily into the croissant and the bakery stuff. And then it's like that little bit of strawberry, a little bit of cherry, a little bit of a, a kind of a tart cherry. Um, a little bit of red apple is going on with that. Um, it's really smooth. It's, um, you know, it's a dry wine, but there's enough of the uh, RS in there from the dosage. Um, so, so when they, when they finish, finish everything off, 
they'll they'll disgorge they'll disgorge the one after it's been aged on the on the leaves and they add a little bit more um still wine um into it just to to finish off what's what came out from the disgorgement and then what they'll do is they'll add a little bit of uh, uh sugar uh in there and what they're doing is they're trying to balance out everything so brute allows you to go from zero to 12 grams per liter it's a pretty wide range honestly so these are i would say on the sweeter side because like prosecco a lot of times like nine to 12 old prosecco used to be 15. Um, so prosecco does taste sweeter a lot of times these don't really taste sweet but there's a fruitiness to it right it's balanced it's not like bone dry which i love bone dry but at the same time you don't want sometimes you you want to keep your enamel on your teeth um i like it a lot it's super tasty it would be a great way to ring in the new year or if you had any other type of celebration going on it'd be a it'd be a really wonderful actual uh valentine's day wine because i can see uh pairing this with um i mean your traditional strawberries um i can see doing that i wouldn't necessarily do chocolate covered strawberries but i can see doing it with some strawberries uh could get that fresh fruit uh and it would go great with this rosé all right let's move on to the 2018 bubble still going strong here going real strong actually so now we have a little bit of nuttiness going on here um so uh, it was 48 months on the lees, and we're five years from five years from the uh, uh, a vintage. So it probably was 48 months, and then sat another. It's been about another year since um, since it was disgorged. So you get a touch of nuttiness, and you're getting that uh, you're getting that uh, bakery type thing going on here. It's also a little bit of caramelization. It's almost like a caramel apple. Like a caramel green apple, which is kind of weird. Not weird, but I was I was expecting more of a red apple. But and the apple is a little oxidized too. And as far as red fruits, I don't get a ton of them on the nose. I mean, I could I could see there being like a cherry strawberry, but I, I'm I'm searching for it. And you can smell the the ox not the oxidation. You can smell that, but you can smell the CO2. All right, very very noticeable. I right, taste it. Ooh, that's good. So that, that extra time in the bottle, uh, in the lees aging, and then a little bit of, just a little bit of aging, um, you're adding more complexity to it. So you're getting that bruised apple, you're getting that um, uh, nuttiness, a little bit of nuttiness. It's like you have some apples and maybe some almonds, um, maybe some pecans, and then you had in a little bit of raspberry. That's why I get more than anything else on the red fruits, raspberry rather than like strawberry or, or, um, or like cherry or even watermelon. It's like a little bit of really tart raspberry. And then you've got, and then you've got a little bit of like, like a croissant on to the side. So it's like you had a little charcuterie thing going on. Well, no meat, but you had like little fruit, nuts. Um, there is a cheese rind thing to it. So you maybe had like a little, like a little bit of like Gruyere or something like that, uh, harder cheese with, with a rind. I could totally see having like having that as your starter. Now, if you were going to pair some other food with this, you could do that. Um, I would personally pair it with like some type of salad or chicken, uh, like a fr fried chicken and champagne or sparkling wine is, is, is becoming a classic pairing. Um, Anything fried would go with this. I mean, if you want to do fried shrimp or whatever, you could do that too. Um, but yeah, I can see doing like schnitzel. Oh man, you do some German food with this. Hey man, it's coming from Trento Doc. I'm sure the Austrian food, you could, you know, the fried stuff would probably be fantastic with it. But yeah, I mean, you could also do it with lighter pastas if you're thinking the Italian side. So yeah. Um, hmm. I'm kind of digging this one a lot. It's, there's more fruit characteristics to it. It's almost a fruit roll-up thing going on now. Not sweet, but just fruity. This is, I mean, it's vintage champagne or vintage Trento Doc. It's vintage sparkling wine. So it has that vintage quality to it. It's not super old. It's only five years old, but it's been enough of aging that you're getting that complexity to it. A little depth. 
the wine, the wines are great. Uh, unfortunately, this one just wasn't up to par. Um, since I haven't done the Christmas episode yet, I'm hoping that the bousquet on that one, so the white bousquet is gonna be perfect. Um, I, I've never had a bad, I mean, I had, so I had the, the lunch, I had the non-vintage versions. Uh, wait a minute, yeah, this is, I'm sorry, this is not, not vintage. I had the non-traditional method versions, uh, so the Charmat method versions uh, of these wines, and they were great, and I've had them in the past, so it was just a bad bottle. All right, well, um, that's just gonna do it for today's show. Now, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and then tell your friends, and we will see you next time, hopefully with some vintage Trento Doc.